I'm June Hunt from Hope for the Heart. Hope for the Heart is a biblical counseling ministry. Bottom line, people want answers. People have questions. Uh, real people have real questions and they don't want to mess it up. They don't want to mess up their lives. They don't, they don't want to mess up their loved ones' lives. And so people are looking for answers. And um, so that's why, uh, for example, I do a two-hour nighttime call-in counseling program called Hope in the Night. People call from all over the country, from all over uh, the United States and, and uh, Canada, and they ask real questions. And so I'm supposed to, every night, uh, field two hours of, of questions. And it, it's such a privilege uh, to be able to help people, especially when that light bulb turns on and they go, oh, Oh, now I see what I need to do. It's such a privilege. We present biblical counseling, meaning the Bible actually says, first seek the counsel of the Lord. So what has God said? Has he said anything about this issue? And on a personal level, um, I will tell you when I did, I did not know anything about the Bible. I was not raised with the Bible. Uh, I went to a church, but nobody took a Bible. I had one on the shelf. But then I was exposed to authentic Christians. I didn't understand that there was really a difference because I thought I was a Christian, and I wasn't at all. And I remember struggling about even becoming a Christian, not sure that I needed to pray a prayer of salvation. Why do I need to do that? I I'm not drowning in an ocean. Uh, I'm not... Um, a wino in the gutter. Uh, and, and so, bottom line, uh, I did humble my heart and receive Jesus as Lord and Savior. And then I got exposed to the Bible, and I was watching people that I respected. That's what drew me. I, I could see these people had something I didn't have. I didn't know what it was they had. I knew they had information, but actually they had transformation. But I, I was so impressed with uh, what I didn't know about the Bible, and I remember turning one time, and it said something about, if you hate your brother, you're still walking in the darkness. The darkness has blinded you. You don't know where you're going. Well, I knew I hated my father, but I felt justified. I thought, I, I, I appreciate that scripture, but God understands my situation. The problem was, uh, I, I was not the exception, and I needed to take personally, in fact, it, it became like a mirror. I would read scripture and I would think, is that something I am aligning myself with? And um, after a while, my justifications fell apart. After a while, uh, my rationalizations didn't fit. But I didn't know it at the time. I was sincere. I was also sincerely wrong. So I learned what does the Bible say? And forget about what I think. I need to line up my thinking with God's thinking. And then I could be at peace. And I truly experience the peace of God. I personally believe everyone wants to know one wise person. I knew I wanted to know one wise person. The, the go-to person when I could call, I could contact and say, I don't know what to do about this. And that's what God calls us to be. Uh, in other words, if we first seek the counsel of the Lord, and then if we allow God to transform our thinking. The, the Bible actually says in Romans 12, 2, do not be conformed any longer to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. So we can have a renewed mind. It was Jesus who said, the truth sets you free. Well, we all want to be free inside ourselves. There are so many people in bondage around us, so we've got to know truth, and it can't be somebody's made up truth, truth for them. But what is rock solid? What's foundational? That's essential. And then you are secure in the truth that God says, since he's our creator, the one who created us in the first place, 
then we line up with what he says, not what we have thought previously like I had done. One of the challenges I had was, is the Bible really reliable? Now, I wasn't starting out as a strong skeptic, but all of a sudden I got exposed to biblical truth and I then, I'm analytical. I am math, loved math. Math is logical. There's a formula, there's a right answer. Uh, I'm rational and I refuse to be swayed by emotion uh, because I came from a bizarre background and uh, I did not want to make irrational decisions. Well, when I started really looking uh, first at uh, just internal evidence, um, the Bible <laughs> interestingly says, the grass withers, the flower fades, but the Word of God stands forever. So throughout eternity, there are going to be only two things left. Um, I'm talking about people. People will live one place or another. And uh, the Word of God. Anything that God has said is what will last. Now, that's internal. And the importance of the Bible is um, the, the Word of God is described as a, like a double-edged sword. And it penetrates our hearts, it, it, it judges the thoughts and intents of our hearts. So it's very poignant. It can minister in a way that my own human words don't. Now, from an external standpoint, uh, being analytical and um, determining is the Bible really reliable, uh, we did a lot of research on archaeology, places that at one time scientists would say didn't exist. Archaeologists said, well, this, this is a made-up place. And then again and again and again and again. Uh, we have a long list of, of locations and uh, of historical information uh, of finds uh, proving, indeed, uh, there was a Nineveh, uh, just all kinds of, of uh, locations. Now, that's external. That's done from an archaeological standpoint, there's never been anything proven wrong in all these years. There, there's not any scientific information, anything that's proven wrong. Some people think about the Bible as a book of antiquities and uh, they think, well, does it apply? Well, it's interesting. I've talked with those who, upon grieving the death of a loved one, where there are sermons or there are memorial services, do you know the most quoted passage from any book of all? I'm talking about any book or any, any external uh, book that any of us could read. It's the 23rd Psalm. It's the most frequently quoted verse at memorial services to help comfort those. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. And, and you, you see how even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me, Lord. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. And how he prepares a place for us. The bottom line is there is great comfort. In fact, I will just say, when I'm talking with someone suicidal, there is typically one verse. I will, I know it's a scripture. This person may not even be a Christian. I will give, I said, there's a, there's, there are words I want you to know from the one who created you. This is Jeremiah 29, 11. The Lord says, I know the plans I have for you, plans to prosper you, not to harm you, plans to give you hope and a future. So you don't know the plans God has for you. 
right now, you just want to end the pain. But you don't see your life past the pain. Yes, you will get past the pain. And, the, and then you'll see how there's pain with a purpose and how God's going to use that to stretch your capacity for compassion, to reach out and be empathetic with others. Not just sympathetic, bless your heart, but empathetic where you can feel what others feel. This time of great trial will be used by God in your life. In fact, the Bible even says, anyone who is among the living has hope, and that is you. So when you use the Word of God to help someone, it's amazing. Many times it's the lifeline they'll hold on to. Maybe it's just at the bottom and they're just barely hanging on to that tassel, but they can hang on to it because the Lord has plans that we don't even know for our own lives. Very candidly, I remember uh, a time where I had no idea even how to pray. I, I, I wasn't used to praying. I didn't know words. And what I realized is there were a lot of people who had something that I didn't have. I knew I wanted what they had. And they would say, June, there's a huge difference between having a religion versus a relationship with God. I wasn't really sure what they were saying. That They said Christianity is not a religion. It's a relationship with Christ. And I had not heard words like this. And there are scriptures that say it's Christ in you, the hope of glory, inside you. Well, I didn't know those scriptures because I didn't know the Bible. But based on the, the life of these people that I knew were wise, I finally decided I would be willing to try it. I didn't even know if it would work. But I prayed a very simple prayer. It had to be simple because I didn't know how to pray. I prayed and told God that I, I wanted a real relationship with Him. And this, basically this is it. God, I want a real relationship with you. Thank you, Jesus, for dying on the cross for my personal sins. I'm asking you to come into my life to be my personal Lord and Savior. I give you control of my life. Whatever you want to do with me, you can do. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. God knew the sincerity of my heart. I didn't know that my life would change at all. Uh, people who saw me a year later said, what's different about you? I had no idea. I couldn't answer. Another group of people a year later said, you change. What's different? I, I, I remember going to bed that night thinking, what are they talking about? Well, I did know that I had become a Christian, but it wasn't based on feelings. I, I just had a whole new hunger. You know, if you're spiritually dead, you're not hungry. <laughs> if you're spiritually alive, um, live people get hungry. That's healthy people. And I was hungry to grow, to grow to know what God said. And so I, was, uh, I would live for Sundays, couldn't wait to, to learn what I could apply to my life from the Bible. And I needed, I needed wisdom because I had none. Um, I just want to encourage you, if that's the need in your life, you too can humble your heart and say, Lord, I don't know what I need to know, but you created me. And so I thank you for uh, not only knowing about all my sin, but uh, not giving up on me. And I'm right now humbling my heart and asking you, Jesus, to come into my life, to take control of my life. I give you my mind, my will, 
my heart. I just give you my whole life. Whatever you choose to do in me, to me, and through me, you can do. Because I'm giving my life to you. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. If you have just done that, I just want to say, welcome to the family of God. Because that's what he does. He adopts you into his family. That's what the Bible says. And you'll be amazed at what he's going to do in you, to you, and through you. May God's blessing be upon you.